The Braves handed out the biggest ever international signing bonus to Jose Perdomo on Monday. We'll talk about him and whether or not he is the new top position player prospect for the Atlanta Braves. We'll discuss Perdomo and the rest of the international signing class on this Monday episode of Locked on Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked on Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on social media at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure you check out my written work over at Bravestoday.com. Make sure you follow the podcast on social media at Locked On underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback you have for the podcast if you're new. Watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Over 8,700 subscribers on YouTube now. Trying to get to 10K by opening day. You can help me do that by hitting that thumbs up button if you've already subscribed. Thank you so much for your support there of Locked On Braves, whether watching on YouTube, listening on the audio. Thank you so much for your support of the show, especially if you're an everydayer out there. I really appreciate it. Let me know down in the comment section below on YouTube. Today's episode, it is a Miners Monday episode, and we're going to be talking about everything international prospects today. We'll talk about the class that was signed on Monday. We'll also look at some of the most recent international signees and who is creeping up the draft rank uh, draft rankings for the Braves. And we'll also look back at some of the best international signees that the Braves have had and just how big of an impact and how important it is to have to have these international signees in your system, something the Braves didn't have for a while and certainly glad to be playing back in that market and playing in a big way as they handed out five million dollars to jose perdomo we'll talk about all of that on today's episode before we do though I want to remind you this episode is brought to you by jace medical empower yourself when you purchase a jace case providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections get yours today at jacemedical.com and use code locked on to get twenty dollars off your order. That's J A S E medical.com. I want to also remind you, I do a lot of these shows live during the off season. If you want to come over and join us and get in on the comment section that we have those here live, we already have Sylvester, Nicholas, Matthew, Anthony, Jeffrey, Chris Fields in here right now, Leland, Nate dog, lone wolf, Adam, Colby, Chris Kaysen, and Z Zaber Reb in here watching live. Thank you so much for joining me. I know we'll have some others trickle in as well, but I do a lot of these uh, live during the post or during the off season, do them during the post season as well. And they're a lot of fun. If you want to come join, usually start around nine central at 10 Eastern. I see Kane Bailey joining in here as well. So thank you so much. And Neil White, happy new year to you as well. All right, let's jump into the international signing class. Monday is the first day that you could sign international pl- prospects. This really goes from today until the middle of December, I believe, that you can sign these prospects. So it's a wide gap, but typically most of them are signed on that first day that you're eligible. And honestly, a lot of these deals have been known about for quite some time. I'm going to get into a little bit of that as well as how this works and how I don't like how it works. But we'll get into that on today's or in today's discussion. Let's talk about international signing class, how it works, just for maybe some of you that aren't familiar with it. Each team's and allotted a certain amount of money and on revenue sharing. A lot of stuff kind of goes into that, but everybody has their international signing pool money that they can spend. The Braves had $5.925 million to spend this year. Signings of 10000 or less don't count towards your bonus pool, so you can sign as many $10,000 international prospects that you want, and teams do a lot of that. And we'll see the Braves did a lot of that today. An international player is eligible to sign with a major league team between January 15th and December 15th. He must turn 16 before he signs and be 17 before September 1st. So in order to sign right now, you either have to be 16 or already turned 17. You have to turn 17 by September 1st. So that's who's eligible for this signing period. Now, I'm going to get on a a little bit of a soapbox here for a minute, and an international draft needs to happen. The Braves, Braves fans, should know more than anybody that 
this process of signing international prospects, international players is creepy at best. And the way that you have to convince 13, 14 year olds to sign million dollar deals with you it just seems cringe, in my opinion. I, I hate this process. I feel bad even talking about it. It is what it is. There's nothing necessarily wrong with it, especially if you're doing it legally, which the Braves weren't for a while, and a lot of other teams honestly weren't either. But I just don't like this process. There needs to be an international or there needs to be an international draft. And there's been talks about that possibly happening. But just first of all, where we get into the signings, I do not like this process in the least. Hopefully we see some changes in it in the future and it's highly unpredictable. And that's why you'll hear me when we talk about, you know, these J 15, whatever you want to call them type of signings. It's, I don't give much insight and you're going to hear today. I'm not going to give you much of my own insight. We're talking about teenage kids, kids that sign when they're 13, 14, 15 years old. And scouts will tell you, and people who put all these write-ups together on these players will tell you they really have no idea how some of these players are going to turn out. They're doing their best evaluating them as they see them. But again, they're evaluating kids who just got into their teenage years. It's it's an impossible task and it needs to be done away with. There needs to be an international draft that happens once these kids are 17, 18, just like with high school players. That needs to happen. This process is just terrible on so many levels. But it's what we have right now. It's the system that we have in place. And like I said, it's so it's it's so difficult and hard to project high school seniors who are 17 and 18 year old, 18 years old, how they're going to be in four or five years when they're ready for the big leagues, much less trying to evaluate 13, 14, 15 year olds and how they're going to be in five, six years when they're ready for the big leagues. But a lot of them turn out to be really good players. According to an article over on CBS Sports, around 30% of current Major League Baseball players were originally signed as international free agents. So that is a pretty big group there of international prospects that go on to have some sort of impact at the big league level. So this is very important to sign these kids. I'm not, I'm not saying anything about you know the international prospects and that they shouldn't be signed, anything like that. I'm just saying the pros the process for how it gets done needs to be changed and cleaned up in a major way. But again, that's a large pool of players at the big league level right now coming from these international signees. And it is so important and it's so big that the Braves are able to finally spend big once again. And let's talk about what they spent that money on in this international signing class. $5 million of their $5.9 million pool going to Jose Perdomo. Shortstop out of Venezuela. It's the biggest bonus the Braves have ever given an international signee. And it's the biggest bonus in history for a player coming out of Venezuela. First thing you'll notice about that, the Ronald Acuna Jr. impact. That's partly why he's on the thumbnail of this video and because we don't have a picture yet of Jose Perdomo. But you got to figure, and especially with the number that was on his jersey when he signed, He's a big Ronald Acuna Jr. fan, and that certainly helped the Braves land such a huge prospect. Now, where does he ranked? I've seen him as ranked as high as number one in this class. I've seen him ranked as low as number five in this class. So he's pretty clearly a top five player in this class. And again, we're talking about young kids trying to evaluate how they're going to be in four to five years. So take that with a grain of salt. There have been plenty of top five international prospects that, who were signed to big deals that didn't pan out. You don't have to go very far back and look to see some of these deals that didn't pan out, but still most consider him to be a top five prospect. Now, like I said, I'm not going to give you much of my own analysis on Perdomo or really any of these guys, because I haven't seen them. And when I go through my top 10 list, list here over the next couple of weeks, you're probably not going to see me list any of these international prospects because I tend not to really rank them until I'm able to see them myself, at least on video in full season baseball. But I'm going to give you some words from some of the, the guys out there who do a great job covering the international prospects and have much more knowledge on what these guys look like. Ben Badler over at Baseball America, one of the best out there who goes over all these international prospects. He said, early in the scouting process for this international signing class, 
Perdomo established himself as one of the premier players available. A big showcase in Florida focused on him and 2023 catcher Ethan Salas, who is now one of the top prospects in all of baseball, uh, generating major buzz for both players. Salas was the top player in his class, signing with the Padres for 5.6. And now we know Perdomo, he gets $5 million from the Braves. Perdomo's bat's been his calling card with a skill set that draws comparisons to Yankees infielder Glaber Torres. He's an aggressive hitter who has performed well in games with a simple, direct swing and good hand-eye coordination, enabling him to barrel both fastballs and breaking stuff. Perdomo doesn't have the physical upside of some of the other prominent players in the class, but as he's gotten stronger, he has gotten more explosive, giving him more power to go with his hitting ability. While a lot of scouts who saw Perdomo early thought he was ticketed for third base or possibly second base, the improvement he has made defensively give him a greater chance to continue at shortstop. He's a plus runner with good actions and a strong arm. So that's great to hear, obviously, that he can stick at shortstop. I think that's very important. Love to hear somebody at that age that already has you know plus bat skills. Obviously, with a lot of these kids, really young, you're hoping they grow into some power. But certainly very you know glowing remarks from one of the best in the business covering international signing classes, talking about the skill set. The, the hand-eye coordination, the ability to be able to stick at shortstop. I think that is great to hear on Perdomo. From the guys over at MLB Pipeline, they said the ten, teens' bat-to-ball skills are above average. Again, great to hear that, the bat-to-ball skills. He ranks among the best hitting prospects in the class. He has a good feel for the strike zone. His swing continues to improve. Scouts have noted his ability to drive off-speed pitches and fastballs to all fields with relative ease, and he has a knack for making hard contact. Rarely strikes out and always puts the ball in play. Love to hear that. Plus running potential. Love to hear that. He could be a threat on the base pass in the future. On defense, Perdomo, Perdomo is a fundamentally sound shortstop with enough range and arm strength to remain in the position as he makes his way through the minor leagues. Now that he will receive daily instruction from the Braves, he'll be able to fine-tune a lot of his foundation. So again, another you know glowing remark there. The bat-to-ball skills, hand-eye coordination, uh, defensively, being able to stick at shortstop with the range and arm strength. So all great things to hear. So, again, that's what we know about Perdomo right now. I'm not going to try to sit here and tell you off one YouTube video that I've seen of him that I can give you a lot of detail. I can't wait to see him, though. Everything sounds great. My guess is that you're going to see Perdomo ranked as the Braves' top position player prospect at this point. I think he's going to surpass Alvarez, you know, McKay, Baldwin, whoever you got at the top right now, even Guanipa, who is a top international prospect signing from last year, you're going to see a lot of hype coming on Perdomo. I see people in the comment section saying it's it's the Perdomo era. Joe Me says it's the Perdomo era has begun. People are excited, and I get it, and I'm excited about him as well. Again, glowing remarks that you hear on him. I cannot wait to watch him play. I hope he is that guy, and again, it's going to be years. This is not somebody who's going to come in and take over the shortstop position in two, probably even three years. We're talking at least four, five years down the road before he is in the plans, but certainly you know, a high ceiling for Perdomo and excited the Braves were able to get him on. As Doc's card says, time will tell in the case for all these international prospects, but sometimes it's not the highest ranked prospect who makes the biggest noise. Next, I'll go over some of the Lesser signed, lesser known prospects of the Braves signed in this international class and who maybe could break out for the Braves. We'll discuss that next. Get in on all the action this NFL postseason with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action than right now. NFL postseason is going on. NBA, NHL, college basketball, Major League Baseball right around the corner. I uh, can not feel it in the air right now because it's freezing cold, but Major League Baseball season is coming. FanDuel's app is also easy to use, and there's so many different ways to play. Live same-game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays and more. Right now, you go and look, the 49ers are the Super Bowl favorites at plus 190, followed by the Ravens, Chiefs, Bills, and Lions. Hadn't watched the NFL in a while. Apparently, the Lions are good again. If you want to go get in on that action over at fanduel.com slash locked on, that's fanduel.com slash locked on. Visit fanduel.com slash play safe as well for tools and resources to help you stay in control 
of the way you play. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride-or-die car alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride-or-die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. I want to remind you that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, let's jump back into the international signee discussion here. Very exciting day for Braves fans. I, I'm really excited about Perdomo. I'm excited about this class. We're going to talk some more about some of the most re recent signees and how you know they're some of the guys I'm most excited to see in the upcoming season. But let's go through the rest of the signees really quickly, and hopefully I get some of these names wrong. I'm sure I'm not going to, so I apologize. Juan Espinal, outfielder out of the Dominican Republic, was their second highest signed player at 440000 just going based off looks, which is all I really have to go on now, maybe a couple of batting practice sessions on YouTube, he looks like a stud, Espinal does. In terms of just pure athleticism, he looks like you know an athletic talent. Now, again, on the one YouTube video of him I saw, looks to have you know some trouble with that swing. Swing could certainly use some work, but again, you're just talking about a physical specimen he certainly looks the part and somebody that maybe has very high ceiling as well if he can put it all together next one is Anthony gonzalez right-handed pitcher out of the dominican republic signed for sixty thousand. tall lanky the video i saw of him looks like a low 90s fastball hard breaking slider curve not sure what it was because it was upper 70s which makes me think it's a curveball but it had so much late hard break on it so really interesting pitch also saw him throw a change up as well so looks like a pretty talented arm there. Isaac Osorio, outfielder from the Dominican Republic, signed for 35000 Also had Gabriel Sessa, an outfielder from the Dominican Republic, signed for 30000 Smooth-looking swing from him. Didn't see much video or any video on the rest of these, so I'll just run through the names for him. Francisque Kendra, right-handed pitcher, 10K from the Dominican Republic. Remember, any 10K signing doesn't count towards your bonus pool. Juan Mateo, an infielder from the Dominican Republic, signed for 10K. And then Rafael Lastra from the DR, Fernando Duarte from Venezuela, Yonder Pinero from Venezuela, Noslin Marquez from Venezuela, Jorge Nunez from Venezuela. Those were all pitchers as well, the last several there that I mentioned. So a lot of pitchers in this class. You typically don't see a ton of pitchers signed during the international signing period, but uh, Braves going with a lot of pitchers here. Had some luck with that last year. Um, we'll talk about, or maybe with John, John Carlos Lara, maybe two years ago, apologize, but uh, normally don't see a lot of pitchers taking it. I'm going to see a lot of outfielders, a lot of shortstops who are signed during the international signing period, but we know how well the Braves have done with pitching. Hopefully that continues with some of these guys. So again, I, I can't give you much detail on any of these other players that they signed, but uh, just glad to see the Braves are in this market again and just how important it is for them to be able to sign all of these players and sign some of the, the bigger impact players as well, like a Guanipa last year, like an Ambioris Taveras and others. It's just really great to see the Braves in this, in this arena. Once again, spending big money, most they've ever spent before on an international prospect. Looking back at the recent international signings, and looking at the top, before we do that, look at the top 30 for the Braves. And this is just on MLB Pipeline. Those rankings need to be updated. But the Braves have six players ranked in their top 30 
on MLB Pipeline who were international signees. By comparison, you go look at the Padres, and they have nine, five in their top 15. This is what the Braves have been missing for so long. They ha- you know, went so long without signing some of these top guys. And look, signing big you know, international prospects to big dollars doesn't always mean success, but it does bring a different level of desire in those players, especially when you're talking about trades. Look at Ambioris Tavares. Hasn't proven anything on the field yet to show that he deserves to be a top prospect. But even on, you look, go look at MLB Pipeline's rankings right now, which again, need to be updated. He's in the top 10 in the Brave system. And it's because of how much he signed for. You can say the same for Diego Benitez and, and Douglas Glad, who haven't exactly shown out at any level so far, but because of how much they signed for, they're still very you know valuable thought of prospects who you can then trade in deals or you can help boost up your system. The Braves haven't had that for so long. And now that they're able to sign all these players, it's going to help the depth of their farm system. It's going to help them in trades, and it's going to help them at the big league level as well. But let's go back over recent signees that they have and guys I'm really excited to see in 2024. They signed 21 guys last year. Signed 12 this year. They signed 21 last year. Luis Guanibu, I've talked about. Biggest international signing that year at $2.5 million. John Gill, a really uh, exciting and intriguing prospect to watch. He signed for $110K last year out of the DR. And Mario Baez, who had a big year in the DSL, he signed for $240K last year. So three guys they signed last international class who I think are in the top 30 or probably will be in the top 30 of the Braves most updated prospect rankings. In 2022, they gave $2.5 million to both Diego Benitez and Douglas Glaude. Um, Again, those two big ceilings haven't really proven anything yet, but they're still really young. And you can say that for a while about a lot of these signings. I talked about Lara, who they signed in 2022, and I want to say he's somebody that didn't sign initially. The Braves signed him later in the signing period for just 10 k And I've seen him ranked as high as number five by some evaluators out there in the Braves system. And then 2021, when the Braves were really starting to come out of all the restrictions, they signed Embioris Tavares for $1.5 million. Again, hasn't really gotten it done yet, but I really hope that he can. His glove is so smooth. If he can hit it all, I think he's really going to get back on the national radar. He's starting to fall off right now, uh, but if he can get that back going, that glove is there. He is in my mind of what I've seen, the best defensive shortstop in the system right now. You also got Geraldo Quintero. He signed for 40K in 2019. Luis Diavila, who the Rockies signed for 250K back in 2017. And then the top international signings in team history, you got Ron Acuna Jr., Andrew Jones, Ozzy Albies as some of the more known ones. But looking at the Braves lineup right now, four of nine starters in the lineup were international signees. Acuna, Acuna and Ozzy already mentioned, and then Ozuna and Arcia as well. So nearly half the lineup, starting lineup right now, were international signees. Also three of your bullpen arms, Iglesias, Jimenez, Lopez, all international signees. So that tells you, I talked about the 30% earlier. You see it right there on the Braves lineup. Very important to get these prospects, get them in your system, and they can become valuable pieces for you down the road. So getting these players, setting up a floor for your system. We talked about the Braves system and how down it is right now because they haven't had these intriguing young prospects in your system that, again, even if it takes time for them to develop, they're going to sit there in your top prospect rankings because you can dream on 16, 17-year-old players and what they could be for years. And so this helps the Braves kind of raise the floor of their farm system where they've had great talent at the top. That hasn't been a problem. They've been producing talent, but their floor of their system has really been lower because they haven't been able to continually sign these international prospects to help raise it. So this class will definitely help that. Now, they did spend a lot and spent most of it on one key player, so it's really important, obviously, that he pans out. But again, a lot of these players who end up not signing for a lot, Acuna, Ozzy, they weren't the biggest signees in their classes either and they've turned out okay for the Braves. So can't wait to see what this group of players looks like. All right, next, I'll get to some of your comments and question and some news of the day. We'll get to that here next. 
I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of life, but we can talk for just a minute about something prepared that will prepare us for real life. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. And this is scary. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if my wife or one of my kids got sick with supply chain issues, giving them from life-saving medication that they needed. I, I got a kid with COVID right now, a kid that just came off an ear infection. It's very important to make sure that you have this stuff in case you need it. And thankfully, we'll be okay because we got our Jace case from Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, skin infections, among others. This stuff could happen to any of us. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. I went over there, did it myself. As I said, already got my Jace case. Process was super simple. Sent me my Jace case about a week later. Your form will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharma pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com. Use the offer code Locked On to get $20 off your order. Again, that's jasemedical.com. Use code Locked On to get $20 off your order. I want to remind you once again that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, enjoy our discussion today on the international prospects. We'll get to some of your questions here at the end is we don't really have a lot of news coming out for major league baseball right now still waiting on where snell is going to go montgomery bellinger so many free agents out there and we are a month away from spring training thank you cannot wait for spring training to get here it's some warmer weather i know you're down in the south right now like i am i am not liking this weather that we're having we got to get back to some warm weather get back to some baseball i watched the june 8th game the other day, the replay of that from the Braves and the Mets, just so entertaining. Love that game. I forgot that Strider and Verlander started what ended up being a slugfest. So weird. Baseball can be so weird and so beautiful at the same time. One of the best games from the year. But I can only watch so many replays. I'm ready for some new action, ready to see this Braves team get back on the field. All right, get into some of the questions here. Chris Field says, what's up, Jake? I know you don't like to project the futures of such young players, but what's your take on the Braves international signing draft as a whole mix of pitchers versus hitters thoughts on the Venezuelan influence. So kind of touched on some of those things already. I think what Ronald has done uh, and the way that he, he represents his country, you know, you talk about why did the Braves let him go back and play in winter ball over in Venezuela like that? I, mean, I don't think it's necessarily because of this, but it's certainly a great recruiting tool. And I think it certainly had something to do with the Braves being able to sign Perdomo and some of these other players out of Venezuela. I got to believe that that helps. As far as this class goes, I'm a little surprised, like I said, to see so many pitchers involved. You don't normally see that many pitchers being signed during this international signing period. But again, the Braves have done pretty well there in the past and you know have a great system obviously for developing young pitchers. Leland Hurt says, I'm hearing chatter about Ozuna being traded before the season begins. Are you hearing this? I am not hearing that. I'm, well, I'm not hearing that from any reputable sources. I'm hearing it from plenty of people on social media saying the Braves should trade Ozuna, you know, maybe free up some money. I, I don't really know what the reasons are behind trading a 40 home run bat. Look, You'd have said this last se off season. I would have said trade him for whatever you can get him. You got to trade him for Patrick Corbin or Madison Bumgarner. Do it. Just get him out of there. But there's, I think there's one thing, and I've talked about this on here before. I, I don't think the value you're going to get back for trading Ozuna is what you think it's going to be. You're not getting back some great return for trading Ozuna, and in doing so, you're giving up the guy who was the second best designated hitter in all of baseball last year behind Shohei Otani. Now, do I think he takes a step back in 2024? Certainly, but you go look at the metrics and I've written about this. I've talked about this. It was no fluke. What Ozuna did last year, you go look at the underlying stats. It was no fluke. So I think he certainly has, you know, 
on the field at least, earn himself another opportunity and everything you hear in the clubhouse. The guys love him, and he's been great for the clubhouse as well. So hopefully he's turned things around, most importantly, in his life and gotten things together off the field. Certainly on the field, he is starting to show that he is deserving of the contract that he has. But just to a baseball standpoint of it, I do not understand. It's the same thing. I still hear people that, that comment about trading Max Freed. You got a team wanting to win a World Series this year, and you're wanting to trade away the second best DH in baseball last year and a guy who's finished in the top five in, in, in NL Cy Young voting two out of the last four years in Max Freed. Why would a team who wants to win a World Series trade either of those players? It just it makes no sense to me. I, I, I get it. I understand it's the offseason. We're trying to come up with some ideas and some talking points. I certainly know I have to do it here for a podcast, but I, I do not understand the logic of wanting to trade some of your best assets in Ozuna and Freed. I, I just, I don't understand that. Z Razor Reb says, what are your thoughts on Diego Benitez? Still haven't seen him in full season ball, so can't really give you my full evaluation of him, but hadn't really tapped into that potential yet. So, We'll have to see. He'll probably going to come stateside this year. We'll get a better look at him uh, going forward and be able to evaluate evaluate him a little bit better. Uh, Richard Ryle said, if we would have had an international draft back when we signed Ronald Andrew Ozzy, who says we would have gotten them? We may not have, and I get that, but I still just think it's it's better all around for everybody involved if we just put these players in a draft, wait till they're 17, 18 years old, and have a draft for these players. Just my opinion is certainly feel free to, to disagree. Let me know in the comments section. I just, I hate the idea of signing these players and coming to these handshake agreements under the table when they're 13, 14 years old. It just, again, it feels cringe to me, but uh, again, feel free to, to disagree. All right, that'll do it for this episode of Locked on Braves. Thank you so much for your comments. Thanks for joining me here live. We're almost over to 200 people live here talking about international prospects. Hopefully you enjoyed that discussion. I cannot wait to see these players, even getting them at the DSL level this year, getting some numbers on there. One thing I'll tell you, you know, when you were looking at Perdomo, we're talking about, you know, what he's what is he going to do? When I'm looking at DSL numbers, I probably should have said this earlier because a lot of you probably aren't here at the end to hear this, but when I'm looking at DSL numbers, I'm looking at the walk to strikeout ratio. The one thing I want to see in a young hitter like this, are they walking as much as they're striking out? If they're not, that's a huge red flag for me at that level. If they are, then certainly there's some hope from plate recognition and being able to control the bat at the plate. And that's one thing I look for in young hitters when I'm looking at DSL numbers. So keep that in mind when you're looking at Perdomo and some of these other guys. What does that walk to strikeout ratio look like? All right, again, that'll do it for this here episode of Locked on Braves. I can't believe I just said this here episode. I am from the South, but that will do it for this episode of Locked on Braves. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure that you follow us on social media at shortstopball and at Locked on underscore Braves. And we will talk to you next time.